This is another iRaw podcast. And sometimes I let my imagination run completely wild and I totally make up the scene of where I am. But water is always part of my scene. Like no matter where I wind up or who's guiding the meditation, water always sneaks in there in some form or another. Whether it's I'm at the ocean, a waterfall, a little babbling brook, it will always sneak in there for me. Welcome to Wild Development Studio. Join us as we venture into the breathtaking realm of wildlife arts and untamed adventures. With captivating stories from the field and ideas to dive into the visual arts, we'll ignite your passion for conservation. Get ready to develop something wild. Welcome to Wild Developments. I'm your guide, Lauren, and today we're talking with Jennifer Fay Colombo. She is a watercolor artist living in Norwalk, Connecticut. She fell in love with the fluidity of the watercolor medium and has been her favorite to work in for over 25 years. In addition to her fine arts training, Jen has a BF in theatrical scenery design and spent over a decade working in the entertainment industry before exploring other things and eventually returning to her roots as a fine artist. Jen's intention is to bring a sense of calm, peace, and joy to others through her paintings. She's inspired by nature, with the ocean and the cosmos heavily influencing her work. In addition, as a lover of all things personal growth, Jen creates journals and card decks with her artwork to add beauty and elevate those transformational tools. Jen, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. So you are a watercolor artist. Before we start talking about that, what was your background before you started jencolombo.com or have you always been an artist? I have sort of always been an artist in some form or another. Um, I have loved painting and drawing ever since I was a kid. Some of my favorite toys to play with were anything that you can get your hands on that were arts and craft related from spin art to spirograph to the little weaving looms to like making things out of clay. And then all of my drawing and painting stuff. I used to have like a little bag full of just art supplies. So it's something I've always done. And um, my grandmother, who I never had the fortune to um, meet, uh, was a painter later on in her life. She started taking classes and stuff as an adult. Um, so I feel like I have a deep connection to her because of that that's been sort of passed down to me. And I was very fortunate that the high school that I went to um, really was okay and cool with the arts. So I took art my entire high school career, freshman to high school, uh, freshman to senior year. And in my senior year, you could take more of the advanced classes. And that's where I actually learned how to watercolor for the first time. And it was instant love affair. As soon as the pigment like hit the water, I was like, oh, this is mine. I love this. This is my most favorite thing in the entire world. And then it continued on from there. Did you guys, okay. So I have to ask, cause in my high school experience, cause I was the same way childhood Play-Doh machine, my Crayolas, that's where it was at. And then my art high school experience when I first was introduced to watercolor, it was like those little, not to knock the Crayola eight pan watercolors, but that was my experience. And the teacher didn't go into anything like wet on wet or uh, glazing or any of those fun techniques. Did you have that in your experience? I did. So interesting you say that. So my freshman year, we did get to play with watercolors, but we had the little set, the little pan set that you're talking about. And my senior year for my advanced drawing and painting class, uh, the art teacher was an incredible, incredible watercolorist, like showed locally. And we used all professional supplies. So we got upgraded to all the professional two paints. We learned how to stretch watercolor paper. We learned all of the different techniques first by our, our first thing was you was to copy a watercolor just so you could sort of get like, okay, here, here's what's going on here. And then our second assignment was choose your own adventure. And that's really actually where I fell in love with it. So I got to pick the subject I wanted, which was a flower. I still have it 25 years later. It still sits in my portfolio as a, cause it's a, it's a beautiful memory for me. And um, yeah, so I actually really got to experience the magic of it. 
Oh, man, that sounds like a wonderful experience. Yeah. I still have my first watercolor too. And I, I like to use that as references. Wow, you've come a long way. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, people don't really realize the difference between like beginner sets and professional sets and like the paper especially makes a huge difference. Yes. And she had us painting on, on the good professional paper. Like we had, I, I feel very, very fortunate to have been exposed at that level at a young age. So before you really started your art practice, like you have now, I saw online, you were in the entertainment industry. What were you doing there? And what was that like? Yeah. So I, um, originally had no intention of being an artist when I was younger. It was just something I did and people couldn't also tell me what to really do with it. And I'm also highly practical. So I actually went to school for theatrical scenery design and I have a bachelor's of fine arts um, in theatrical scenery design. And I worked as a, a scenic designer for over a decade in the entertainment business on different corporate events and theater shows and live events and television and all of those sort of things uh, before leaving to pursue other things completely unrelated to art. And when I left the business um, and I started to do other things for my career, that art calling just kept coming back. It kept nudging me. It would not go away. The voice kept coming in. Like anytime I'd go walk out in nature, especially when I would walk in nature, I would just gravitate towards different flowers and colors. And I would sort of hear this inner voice of like, go paint, go paint, go paint, go paint. And after, I don't know, it must've been 10 years or so, I picked up my watercolors again. And I was like, I'm going to go take a beginner class just for fun at the, like the local, you know, like the continuing ed that usually is around. It's like, I haven't done this in a while. And I just fell completely in love all over again and started continuing to paint. And it was really purely for my own fun and my own pure joy. I had never intended to show. I had never intended to sell. I never intended to do any of the things that I'm doing now. And that's just where the path took me. So now in addition to painting, I also take my works of art and make products for myself and for other people too, journals and card decks as well. So how did you get from, okay, I'm painting for myself and you know, trying to quiet this little voice in my head to having a website, like what caused that shift? Well, the first thing that happened was the, the class that I took was really amazing because the teacher really encouraged me. And I kind of sat by myself in the corner, like no one wound up sitting with me. I went through my own process of first not doing the lessons and she was okay with that. I sort of needed to have my own experience with getting back into art without any rules and regulations and all that stuff. And when I was finally ready, I kind of stepped back into what we were doing in class. And the teacher is actually the one who was like, you have to show. And I was like, I don't want to do that. And she's like, I really, really think that you should. And so she's the reason why I wound up where I wound up today. She's, she's part of the many people that helped that chain reaction start to happen. She was the beginning of, of the chain reaction. And um, yeah, eventually I wound up creating a website and through my own studies of personal growth and things, I've always been a lover of tools of, of personal growth. And then I went, wow, wouldn't it be really cool if I actually got to put my artwork in these products? And then that started to happen. So eventually, yes, I needed to, to, to put a website together and, um, you know, make that happen to make it easier for people. The shift between the entertainment industry to the art world, was it, you know, hustle and like fast moving with the entertainment industry? And it, do you feel a little bit more centered with art or what was that difference like? So there are two very different experiences, but I'm so grateful for both because I really lean very heavily on my background as a scenic designer to the work I do now. Um, I do, I, I love co-creating and collaborating with people. So 
even though I work on my own collections, I take the idea of co-creation into every single thing that I do. So I'm always setting intentions for every single painting that I do. And when I'm working with people, whether it's they've commissioned me to do a painting for their space or to do artwork for a product, it really, really, it's very hard to explain because I don't even know how it happens, but it really is this very collaborative, co-creative process. And I really credit that to my background in the entertainment industry because I knew no other way because mm. it wasn't just about you. It was about all of the the different designers, producers, choreographers, directors. It was all of the different team that was making a thing happen. So I take that into my approach of how I work now. And also, um, I love a deadline. I know some artists don't love that, um, but I love a deadline. <laughs> and that 100% comes from that background too. So um, I, I lean on that a lot. Although when I'm doing work on my own, my own collections are really even the work that I'm doing with my clients. I, I have, I tend to have a lot more freedom because there's a very different brief, right? There's a very different ask going on, but yeah, I, I, I really feel like I try to blend my two worlds together. That's really cool how that happens. I've seen that with my own experience and it just, it makes you a unique artist. I love that you're able to incorporate that and credit your past experience. And if somebody wanted to contact you for a commission, how does that collaboration process look for you? Yeah. So usually people can send me an email or we might get on a phone call. It kind of depends on what the ask is. And I always ask people a few questions. Usually they come to me and they have an idea of what, what they want. Uh, I always ask my clients to set an intention for me. Um, Cause I think that that's really important. Like, why do you want this piece of artwork? And that's true. Even if somebody commissions me to do a pet portrait, right? Why do you, why do you want your pet to be painted? So it doesn't matter what the subject is. And we go through all the logistics, the not as fun stuff of like what size and things. And I may have to help them guide them with what size for what the space is. And then we get into the really fun stuff. So if somebody has seen my work and they're like, oh, I want something like this, but I'm not sure what it is, or I'm really inspired by all of these different things, we will work together to look for inspiration to um, photographs, nature, like everything that's out there. Some of the work that I've done, I will ask them questions too about like, what are your favorite colors? What do you gravitate towards? Most importantly, what colors do you really not like? So we stay away from those. And it also does come down again to why do you want this in your space? So that's that's how the process works. And sometimes, depending on what the ask is, if we're going to the abstract realm, I will usually do a couple of quick little sketches or things or something to like sort of get the vibe going and kind of see what what is the direction this is going, show them, and then we'll evolve from there. And then eventually I'll go create the real piece. Yeah, that's a good piece of advice for people that do commissions because like, I don't usually use a normal color palette. I use like purples instead of blacks and things like that. So I always ask the client if that is what they want. And I do a little sketch and kind of place the colors where I think they're going to go in the final piece because some people get really, I mean, they're spending money on it. They should be picky, mm -hmm. but um, you have to make sure you're you guys have the same vision and you're on the same page it is very so important. And honestly, I have had times where people have asked me to do something and I have said, I don't really think I'm the right fit for this, but I know this person, or this is the kind of person that you should be looking for. Oh, that's a good tip too. Yeah. What are some intentions that people have given you before in the past? Oh, this is such a good question. So some of the intentions that I've received in the past are, I would like to bring more joy into my space. I would like to bring more calm into my space. Some people, it's more of capturing a memory. So for example, I one time did a commission for somebody and it was a place that the family vacations every year. So it wasn't just a place that the family vacations, right? The deeper meaning is 
this is about love. This is about time together. This is about creating memories. This is about all of the joy that I get to experience with my family. Let me enjoy this time where the kids are little before they go off to college. So there's that deeper meaning underneath. And that's what I look for. I'm, I might have to steal that and use that. <laughs> please, please, please feel free. And that's the same too with pet portraits. Um, if I, I've done a bunch of pet portraits before for people, and I like to know about the animal's personality and also like, why do you want to have this created? Or sometimes it's for a gift. So if somebody is gifting somebody, they're commissioning me for a gift. I also want to know, in addition to what do you think of this piece? Oh, freedom. Oh, that was another really good intention I got one time from somebody who wanted their, their daughter painted on her riding her horse. And it was just all about pure freedom. And um, yeah, I just, I really want to get to that core essence of why do you want this? And that's true of the pets too, right? We love our pets. Mm. They bring us so much joy. They bring us so much love and laughter and all of the things. So to me, that's what it's really about. That's amazing because like art is so much more than just a pretty painting on a wall. It's supposed to invoke emotion and make you feel something. And you are doing a good job in making sure that you are getting those emotions across through your work. Thank you. And You've got an ocean theme series coming out. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So I have loved the water ever since I was a child. I loved when I was a kid, I got to walk along the shore and collect seashells. And as an adult, I'm very fortunate that now I actually do live very close to quite a few bodies of water that I get to experience all the time. And to me, the ocean, the water, any kind of water, any kind of movement I'm right near off the sound in, in Connecticut. And to me, the water, the, the salt water, the salt air, it's so healing. It's so powerful. If you're in a bad mood, you can go there and just instantly feel calm. Even if it's just a little bit, even if you just gr get to grab a little bit higher of, of calm than where you started. But the ocean and the water also shows us the entire range of emotions from that frustration and anger and like that fierceness. And then all of a sudden it calms and there's that, there's this roughness to it, but then there's also this softness where it can be so still and there's this beautiful, gentle roll and ebb and flow onto the sand. So that's what inspires me is it is a place I go to all of the time to connect for inspiration, for healing, for getting calm, to get clarity. I love to walk the beach if my mind is very chattery and that like monkey mind overthinking going on. It is a place where I can go and breathe and ask questions. And that's what inspires this collection. I want to be able to bring those soothing salty vibes into people's space into their view into my space <laughs> <laughs> um so that's that's the inspiration behind it and it is truly a joy to paint and I do actually pick up seashells even as an adult uh, when I'm at the beach and each of these paintings a seashell hangs out while it's being created that is part of my process for this collection I set an intention the shell is there so each of these pieces will have, when I figure out how to do it and adhere it in the best way manner possible, <laughs> we'll have a seashell that also is, is on the back of each of these paintings, really bringing that nature completely indoors, both in the literal physical sense and in the abstract sense. That is cool. Is like a direct connection to the ocean. Yeah. Do you ever, cause you're, it's, how do I want to phrase this? Your collection is in watercolor? Yes. Do you ever paint with ocean water? I have done that. Yes. I have done that with stuff for clients that are going into products. I haven't done it for actual pieces only because I'm not a hundred percent sure if archivally they would be okay. Yeah. So energetically the ocean's present. <laughs> but yes, I have done that, but I will only do that if it is something I know that is going to be scanned in and become part of a product, but 
not something hanging in somebody's space. But if I'm incorrect about that and anybody knows anything more about that, please feel free to contact me and share because that would be super fun. <laughs> yeah, that would be a fun experiment to try because I've done a couple pieces with freshwater from Crystal River and I painted a manatee and that's a special piece for me, but I haven't tried salt water yet because I'm afraid like how is it going to affect the paint or is the salt content too high or low or yeah so many questions yeah that's interesting now you have journals on Amazon with your artwork on the cover what what inspired you to do that and what does journaling mean for you so I am, I am a journaler, though not daily. It's more like when I feel like I need. And I think journaling for me really became a beautiful practice. It was also a beautiful practice of letting go and understanding that I didn't have to fill every page. And when I felt complete, I feel complete. It's a beautiful opportunity to sink into these really amazing questions or to ask a question and really just see what is free flowing from you to get answers versus from your mind? When when you can get into a really good journaling practice, I found that when I can get into that really good flow state, I know it's not coming from my chattery mind. It's more coming from my heart and my soul and my intuition. So as somebody who loves to use these products, I decided to create my own and I create them for clients as well. And my journals are very unique in that they're not just lines on the inside. Some of them have prompts and some of them have different themes. Some of them are the ocean one. There's an ocean one up there. That's just lined pages, but every single page is full of colorful artwork to inspire you. That's great. I love journaling. Even just like if I can't sleep at night and I have all these thoughts just playing on repeat in my brain, like writing it out and getting it on the page gets it out of my head and I can sleep. Or I've always heard too that like really, really intelligent people will talk to themselves and okay. like getting that conversation with yourself helps you to process things. And that's the same thing with that journal that I love that you are are using that practice too and that people can, can find you and, and purchase that. The, what is a card deck? You mentioned that and I saw that on your website. What exactly is that? So a card deck is, if you're not familiar with them, the, the easiest example I could give you that people would know is a tarot deck or a traditional playing card deck, um, but that's not what I create. So it's based on that idea though, where it's a deck of cards and you do something with it, right? You shuffle, you pick various cards to receive a message, or maybe you're playing a game. So there are many, many, many other types of card decks out there. For those of us who used these when we were back in school, I'm sure they're not using them now, uh, flashcards to mm -hmm. help you remember, or those memory games or things like that to help you learn and to help you study. So this is the same idea, except they could be a deck of affirmations, of beautiful, positive uh, sayings and reminders for you throughout the day. Uh, sometimes I create decks that are based around prompts and questions or reminders. And that's what I do for other people's businesses. So it's always tied to what their business is, but it's a great way for you or your clients, depending on what you're doing. It's really fantastic. It's a great way to start your day or end your day or in the middle of your day, you just quickly shuffle, you go pick a message and just kind of tune in for a moment uh, for those of you who love to journal, it could be an opportunity to then take it over to the journal pages. It could be an opportunity for some action steps or learning. So they can really look like so many different things depending on what's going on. The two that are on my website at the moment specifically are affirmation cards, um, but I have many others that I create for my clients. I was looking at your Facebook page yesterday to prepare and it looked like you did a workshop or something with water cards. Was that something you created or did you attend a, a workshop? Yeah. So I had, so I taught a workshop where we actually created our own affirmation cards. So I showed people some very basic watercolor techniques with the pan set going back to what we were talking about. So don't feel like if you wanna play with something, you can't because you don't have professional supplies, totally go for your kids' supplies 
or go buy inexpensive kids supplies. Um, so yeah, so I've taught workshops before where I show people basic watercolor techniques and really I'm coming at those from the angle of just pure creative fun and enjoyment. And then when they're dry, we were writing our own affirmations and reminders or quotes that people were really inspired by so they could have it on their desk or like tape it up to a wall or shuffle their own little mini, you know, five or 10 deck to pull a message for themselves for the day. And it was coming from themselves, stuff that was really meaningful to them. Yeah. Yeah. Not to knock the, the Crayola pans, but they are great. I've got them for my uh, students too, but yeah. having somebody that is experienced in watercolor and can walk you through that instead of just like here. <laughs> Yes. Fun. Oh my gosh. My mind was horrible the first time. Cause it was so dry. It, uh, anyway, I digress. Um, so that's really cool that they are writing affirmations for themselves and having little daily reminders for yourself. And, uh, did you see any particular affirmations that you liked and you're like, Ooh, I might, I might use that in my daily life. You know, when that comes up a lot when people when I've done these with people, this is this, I'm gonna share this one because this is the most common one, is a reminder that you're amazing. Like we forget sometimes and we can be very critical of ourselves. And we would never talk to our best friends like that. Mm -hmm. And you would say to your best friend, I'm amazing, you're amazing. So that I'm amazing one seems to come up a lot and it's a really good reminder. And when you pull that card. It's a good reminder to yourself, but it's also a good reminder to say, was I being mean to myself today? I'm going to show myself some compassion. Yeah. That's in our household. If anybody talks bad about themselves, I'll be like, Hey, don't talk about my husband like that. Or don't talk about my son like that. Cause we are our own worst critic. And I think that's so powerful that you have them write it in their own handwriting. And then it is a reminder to themselves. Like I am awesome. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. So do you have a favorite experience in nature? So many good ones. I already mentioned walking the beach as a child. That's, that's will always be a favorite, but years ago I went to Hawaii and I was on the big Island and that experience, I mean, you are literally surrounded by nature everywhere. It is like nature is giving you a giant hug there. It is, it is such a beautiful place and being by the water and on the sandy beaches there just felt like pure magic. And I was in more of the hidden places, the local, where the locals go. I wasn't in the touristy area. And sometimes I'd be there on the beach early in the morning, completely by myself. And it was just me surrounded by the salt water and the air and like the trees that were giving all of these amazing fruits and the waves and possibly a dolphin in the distance. So that's always going to be a very special place to me. And when I go to one of those nature places in meditation, not all of the time, but a lot of times that's one of the places I will take myself. Ooh, that is a good point because I've done a couple meditations where they're like picture, you know, you're walking on a beach and then my brain starts to panic. Like, oh my gosh, how am I going to paint this picture in my head of what this beach looks like? Do you think that it helps to have a specific place in mind? And then that's kind of one less thing your brain has to do. It does. It can, it can for some people for sure. Um, so I, I have done it both ways. I have done it where I have leaned on something that I know. And if you struggle with visualization or your mind is like, I'm not getting this right. That can be a really great reference for you to step into and sometimes I let my imagination run completely wild and I totally make up the scene of where I am. But water is always part of my scene. Like no matter where I wind up or who's guiding the meditation, water always sneaks in there in some form or another. Whether it's I'm at the ocean, a waterfall, a little babbling brook, it will always sneak in there for me. Yeah, Water is a huge part of my life too. Do you get to scuba dive or uh, snorkel or anything like that often? You know, it's so funny. I actually don't do any of those things. I'm more of a sit on the sand and like take in the water. Um, but maybe one of these days I will venture into learning how to snorkel or something. Yeah. But in just sitting on the beach is totally cool too. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
and then let's see do you have a favorite animal i my husband always jokes that i'm talking to adults about favorite animals i'm like i think it says a lot about the person and their inner self i agree so as somebody who has a dog i absolutely adore dogs but for this answer i will say a dolphin because they love to have fun and play and they're just these magical creatures that get to swim in the ocean all day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That they are one of my favorite too. That was my first tattoo was of a dolphin. <laughs> yeah. Um, and do you get a lot of dolphins in your area? We do not. I do, we no dolphins to be seen where I am, unfortunately. So I have to go other places or use my imagination to go see the dolphins, but it's still lovely to be by the water. Yeah, absolutely. So do you have any big plans for your future? Any um, projects coming up that you want to, to let our listeners know about? Yeah. So I'm always working on different collections. Um, the ocean, ocean vibes one, the name, I'm still working on the name. I don't know what it's going to be called yet, but although it might have a name by the time that this airs. Um, so I'm always working on different collections. And I'm always adding journals and card decks to my, my, uh, my repertoire. Perfect. And is there anything that you would like to share that you haven't, uh, that we haven't already covered in this podcast? So for those of you who are listening, I just encourage you to take in artwork, no matter whose it is, and just go have an experience with it. And one of my favorite things to do is experience artwork without knowing the intention and why behind it first. I like to have my own experience and see what emotions are coming up for me and what I'm feeling. And then if I choose to go read the inspiration behind it, then I'll go do that. So if you've, that's something you've never done before, I would encourage you to try that on and see what that experience is like for you like that. And then how can people find you? So you can find me on my website, which I'm, I'm sure will be put in into the notes at jenplumbo.com. And I'm always on Instagram. That's the biggest place you can find me, Jen Faye Art. That's so nobody has to try to spell my last name. Um, <laughs> so it's Jen Faye Art, but you'll find me there, Jennifer Faye Colombo. And that's where I'm always sharing my artwork in process stuff, tips, as well as if you love the water, I'm always sharing the salty vibes from my beach walks there. Perfect. I don't think I'm following you on Instagram yet, so I'm going to have to change that as soon as we hang up. <laughs> and before we go, what is one tip that you have for someone that would like to connect with nature? Oh, I love this question so much. It's obviously one of my favorite things to do from, from if you're hearing me throughout this podcast. My tip would be go pick a place Try to find a place that is quieter. There's maybe not as many people around. And I encourage you to turn off your phone and your notifications, even if it's just for five minutes. I know sometimes people have them on because kids, things, emergencies, whatever. If you can turn it off for five minutes and just quietly sit and breathe and just notice and see if you can connect and get present. And if the mind chatter comes in, do not beat yourself up about it. That, by the way, still happens to me on days. That's normal. It's just a matter of practicing, especially if that's new to you and getting quiet is, is newer. Um, that can happen. So yeah, see if you can go pick a beautiful favorite place. Set a timer on your phone if you need to, if that makes you feel better. And just quietly sit and breathe and take, take all that in. And if you want, ask a question and see if an answer drops in. And an answer may drop in then, but it also may drop in much later. I've had both of those experiences happen. It is great advice. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. It was so much fun chatting with you. Same. And until next time, get outside and see what develops. Thanks for joining Wild Development Studio. We hope this exploration into the world of wildlife arts and adventure has sparked a desire to get outside and connect with something wild. 
If you have an adventure that's awe-inspiring, don't hesitate to share. Click the link in the description to submit your story to have it featured on our show or be a guest. Until next time, keep connecting to the wild and see what develops. The views, opinions, and statements expressed by individuals during Wild Development Studio productions do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of Wild Development Studio or its affiliates. Participation in any activities, expeditions, or adventures discussed or promoted during our content may involve inherent risks. It is strongly advised that individuals conduct thorough research, seek professional guidance, and take all necessary precautions before engaging in any such activities. Wild Development Studio, its representatives, or employees shall not be held responsible for any injury, loss, damage, accident, or unforeseen incident that may occur as a result of participating in activities inspired by or discussed in our content. By choosing to engage with our content or act upon any information provided, individuals do so at their own risk and discretion. For more great iRaw podcasts, visit iRawPod.com. That's I-R-O-A-R-P-O-D.com. Ah!